today i'm going to be bringing you guys an update on the revival of cities server we're going to be talking about the alliance we're going to talk about the world heart and how that went we're also going to be talking a little bit later about what immortals you should focus on if you're trying to defeat a holy army in infinity kingdom what's going on guys cheers so as you can see we just took mandragora i'll probably play some footage of that but we took it uncontested and the reason for that is because if we take a look at the map here in infinity kingdom for the revival of cities event you can see that the situation has changed in favor of blue which we sort of expected would happen there are a ton of super powerful players in the blue faction and when the world heart opened um it became really difficult for us to compete to get enough energy cubes to win the world heart it, it just wasn't really in the cards for the contention of relics event now if we go in here you can see that by far idvia took the most amount of energy cubes it wasn't even really a, a contest honestly now i wasn't feeling well for a couple of days during the contention of relics so i don't actually have footage of this but for the most part green controlled i think just one of these relics for a majority of the time and it just wasn't enough so uh, the the big alliances here in green I just want to show you guys sort of what this looks like the alliance power here has changed pretty dramatically um 404 is the strongest alliance here in the server right and so you would think that uh it would sort of maybe they would be able to tip things in their favor especially because I know wick gaming was very active during the contention of relics and he was you know playing really hard trying to you know focus on the contention of relics as much as possible but it seemed like 404 wasn't that interested in directly going head to head with blue and maybe that's because blue had potentially more mega strong players and they just felt like they would be outnumbered regardless but again 404 is the strongest alliance on the server they also have a player with the strongest troop power so we kind of expected them to go really aggressive during the contention of relics which just wasn't really the case there is a language barrier with 404 for us and so that makes it a little bit difficult to communicate with them we just didn't really have much communication honestly it that was probably one of the the hardest parts about the contention of relics is just not really being able to communicate that well with uh the other members of the green faction and once that became apparent we realized that there was just no way that iw uh could take on blue by themselves even with the alliance arc helping us i'm sure you guys if you've been following along with the revival of cities uh, videos here you'll know that uh arc was one of the strongest um green alliances here if we take a look they have uh, fallen to number 10 at this point and that is because after the contention of relics they pretty much disbanded um I know that the player Lord that we are that we currently have in our Alliance um he is one of the strongest players by far on this server this is not his main account right and so you know I think moving forward if he's going to be less active then with the contention of relics being over a lot of the arc players felt that maybe they didn't really uh stand a chance right and so their leader actually sent out this mail uh their leader saga basically said that the situation was looking pretty bleak for them mainly you know their mo most powerful player lord uh this not being his main account he's going to be focusing more on his other account uh at this point many players in arc were playing on the server as alts right not their mains and that's the thing that uh this happened with the server 97 contention of legends event you know for a lot of the players in the region that this game is coming to right for J Japan in this example right for for the revival, revival of cities um this is all of their main accounts and so all the investments that they're making in those accounts you know they, they know that they're going to play that account for a long time whereas many players who create a new account on this server maybe they're still focused mostly on their main and as you can see here uh you know basically the the leader of arc recommended that uh, players leave arc and join a more active alliance over time arc will be less active um they mentioned 404 obviously 404 being the strongest alliance in the server good choice but there hasn't been much communication and there's a little bit of language barrier and they also said that IW which is us have a little bit of potential as well which was very kind of them thank you so much so right now our Alliance is focusing on trying to take the most powerful cities that Arc owned um instead of just kind of leaving them undefended to have blue take them we figure we might as well try and take them for now obviously Kratos uh was taken by CHN that was like the first thing that when they got wind arc wasn't really you know super active after the contention of uh, relics event or even during the contention relics event they took that opportunity obviously to take 
uh, Kratos, which we kind of expected. So we just took Mandragora. We're going to be trying to take Podomoy. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we're probably going to be taking this in just a few minutes as well. Um, and then at that point, who knows, we will see how the server continues to develop. Obviously green still has a massive presence here. Um, blue is, is pretty overwhelming right now, but we'll see how things go. Uh, maybe we can have a two faction server perhaps we can work together with blue moving into server versus server right that would be probably most beneficial for the players in this server who want to keep playing on this server you know it would be best if there weren't civil wars breaking out all the time so hopefully we can find some sort of peaceful agreement but if not then you know we'll we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there obviously the revival of cities event uh is still going on the second stage is taking these level nine cities here um, if we quickly take a look, this is the current leaderboard for the attack ranking. So Max, he is in um, blue faction, strongest blue faction player. They are number one for attacking. We have Kun Kun, we have Lord Clash bashing. We have uh, Nowate. I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, he is also a very strong player in blue. Um, Lord two is literally Lord. He's on here twice. He's in the top 10 two times, which is hilarious. Um, we also have some really powerful players with gaming. Obviously, you guys know. Um, I think I'm in here. There's Worthy Prince is 23. I am at 26. Um, so a lot of really powerful players in here. Um, a pretty good presence from IW as well. So I'm really like proud of that, which is really cool. Um, for construction point ranking, we have a, a different story. Obviously, you know, the attack ranking is based on like, you know, the super, super strong players. Like they want to, you know, be the ones that are the aggressors, right? Um, so for construction points, obviously we have a, a lot of players on here. Neo, I'm familiar with. So this is uh it's looking really good i i like this event uh lord ramen is in is on our alliance as well so this was a very cool event to be a part of so far and again we still have stage two to go so uh stage one rewards i believe went out already so stage two rewards are coming up and uh yeah we'll just have to see how the server continues to evolve moving into that stage at this point though i do want to talk a little bit more about defeating holy immortals because i get this question a little bit players are wondering you know if you're new to the game um you kind of understand how this attribute system works you know water beats fire fire beats wind you know that type of thing and then everyone quickly realizes shadow is extremely powerful because it beats all of them except for holy uh, holy beats shadow but then what beats holy right that's kind of the conclusion that a newer player comes to because if you think okay well how do i want to defeat a player with a strong water team well you just build a strong earth team that's typically like that's a, a shorthand version of the strategy that most players would take but since nothing really counters holy how would you go about building an army that could do that now i think the answer is a lightning immortals now i want to give a quick shout out to westy west here on youtube he has a really good youtube channel if you're into infinity kingdom go ahead and check him out but his video sort of inspired me to talk about this uh, and sort of break this down as to like the theory behind how you can use lightning to counter holy now you see Hammurabi is on the screen here this is one of the newer modals that they have uh in the game which is really cool huge huge aoe damage on this uh on this immortal that increases if there are uh, negative effects on the enemy which is awesome now if we hop over to my server 97 account we can see what a common holy team sort of looks like okay you have gilgamesh you have theodora you have martel and you have monko right this is your kind of standard holy team when you are you know a very powerful player late game you have the ability to do that this is sort of what players are working with and you can notice obviously martel uh, charles is not uh, he's, he's an earth immortal right but he's just so tanky that people continue to use him even into the late game and so since we can't counter holy from an attribute or like an elemental perspective we have to sort of counter the holy team based on what it's doing right what makes the holy immortal so powerful so if we take a look here we have gilgamesh which is you know very good obviously this is like a free to play immortal like you can get him from summons which is awesome he's dealing aoe physical damage with physical damage over time as well so really high damage output on gilga we have theodora doing a massive amount of healing in the back row which is just crazy you have charles applying the shield buff to your immortals which gives you a damage absorption rate which is really good really tanky stuff then you have monko increasing the dodge rate dealing physical damage as well so these are all really powerful immortals but one thing I want you guys to notice uh is that you are dealing pretty much all physical damage here right you're seeing mostly physical damage from 
Monko from Gilgamesh. That's really what's dealing the most damage in that team. So how can we go about countering lots of physical damage and maybe preventing some healing and buffing as well? Well, the answer I think is a lightning team. So there's a few different options here for front row that you have. Now, typically a typical lightning team uses Richard and uh, Peter the Great. In this instance, you may actually want to replace Richard with El Cid if what you're doing is building a lightning team to counter Holy. Okay. If you're building just a straight lightning team just for maximum damage output, you probably want to go with Richard and Peter. But again, for countering Holy teams, I think Peter and El Cid may be better. And here is why. First of all, if we look at Peter the Great, okay, he deals a lot of damage. Okay. 550 damage rate which is crazy but also he dispels all of the buffs of the enemy targets that he's hitting so remember Monko is applying buffs and Charles I believe I think the way that his shield works is that he is applying a damage absorption buff to himself and uh and the other immortals so that is something that can be cleared if you're able to hit them with Peter the Great. Next, we take a look at El Cid. And the reason that El Cid is something to consider for countering Holy is because he straight up reduces physical damage that you take by 30%. And remember, all the damage you're pretty much taking from Holy is physical damage, right? And so this is kind of, it makes a lot of sense as to why El Cid would be really good here. And then, of course, there is also uh, the damage rate that he provides as well. It's not that much damage, but there is some synergy when it comes to countering Holy with El Cid. Next, we have to talk about Genghis Khan. Okay. Genghis Khan is insane. He kind of fits in a ton of different teams because he just deals crazy amount of AOE damage, right? He deals physical damage to all enemies, right? But the big part is that he causes a wound, which means enemies cannot be healed for 10 seconds. And remember, Theodora provides a huge amount of healing for the holy team. So Genghis Khan not only is dealing crazy damage to them, but is also preventing them from getting that heal from Theodora. And, you know, her heal only gets stronger the more damage that the enemy has taken. And so to just straight up prevent that for 10 seconds is huge. Finally, we can take a look in the back row for Yi Song Ye. And Yi Song Ye is just straight up dealing a ton of damage. He's just dealing a ton of damage. Um, you may be able to replace him with Hammurabi uh, in the late game when you get your hands on Hammurabi. Um, that's something that you can consider. I think Hammurabi probably deals a little bit more damage than Yi Song Ye, but I obviously don't have Hammurabi, so I can't test this. He is relatively new into the game. Uh, but realistically, like Yi Song Ye is really powerful. Like he's really good. You can definitely use him if you are trying to counter holy. And that's that, right? Now, again, you can use Richard. The thing with Richard that, that I love about him is that you have a 40% chance of stunning, which is really huge, right? They can't recover energy for that time. And if we take a look at the lightning dragon here, um, we can see that, you know, when the lightning streak goes off, uh, on their primary skill it deals a ton of damage but if the enemy is stunned it deals double damage which is huge so Richard has really good synergy here with the lightning dragon and I think that is why players typically choose Richard over El Cid also Richard is free you can get him from summons whereas El Cid you have to typically get from like wheels or you have to get him from the daily bundle right so that's something to consider as well so um it's up to you which of those two you want to go with but I think testing El Cid in this scenario is definitely something to consider so again Peter removing the buffs from the enemy Genghis Khan massive damage along with Peter um and preventing healing Isong, massive damage, Hammurabi, massive damage, and then El Cid, reducing physical damage taken. When you're considering what other Tower of Knowledge skills you should put on here, um, I would say building El Cid a little bit more tanky and adding coercion to him is something that you should consider. This is going to reduce the dodge rate of all enemies uh, by 20%. And if you remember, Monko is increasing your enemy's dodge rate by 25%. So this is sort of like a way to counter that uh, that buff that Monko is applying to the uh, to the holy team. I would also consider things like Oaken Guard, right? This is reducing physical damage that you're taking. There's obviously also some uh, some elite ones that you can use that are very similar. Physical Shield is a great example of this, and also. So you want to put a lot of physical damage on your Peter the Great and Genghis Khan as well. So we're looking at something like anger here, right? Where you're just getting 30% increased physical damage. I think that's really great for either of those, uh, either the back row or Peter the Great as well. Garot is another popular one that you see a lot. 40% chance of dealing physical damage. It's just a really, really good 
uh tower of knowledge skill that you can use here so there's plenty of options but again um making sure that you can uh use coercion is is going to be really useful and then just having a, a tanky el cid maximum physical damage output on everybody else here anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed the video or you found this useful or informative or anything like that make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other infinity kingdom players might see it as always if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload an infinity kingdom video comment down below what you think would be the best way to counter a holy team and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace